You're late, Josh. I'm perfectly on time, Josh. Oh, bro, Moso lays up in here. We got, oh, we got all kind of motherfuckers showing up. This is awesome. Gonna be a good one. Going to be a good night tonight, y'all. Y'all, give me a second. Just give me a second here. Isn't that better? Much better, don't you think? Yeah, air conditioner works beautifully in this house, Josh. Why don't you come over and find out one day? Oh, bro, we got all kind of motherfuckers showing up. This is awesome. Hell yeah. Fuck yes, fuck yes. Michael Klein is here. Michael motherfucking Klein is in the chat. So y'all tell Michael Klein what's up. And we have somebody down here. Where you at, bro? Oh, bro. Where you going? Yeah, bro. Fucking Willie's up in here. What? What you doing? What? What? Hey, where you going? Where are you going, bro? Hold on, man. What you doing, bro? Is that right? Hey. Say, bro. Bro. What you doing, bro? Yeah? Hey. Oh, shit. Look who else decided to join us. What's up, dudes? I know what y'all want. And we're gonna start the evening off right. Yeah, bros. Oh, there's the bros. Going to town on some treats. Come on, y'all. Didn't get them all. Come on, y'all. Slacking. What's going on? Boris. I will. That's it. That's all y'all can have. Yeah, bro. Boris. What's up, Willie? Come on, get it, bro. Willie. Oh, Will, it's yours. Oh, you want it on the floor? Come on, Boris. Ow, it's my finger, bruh. All right, that's it. There's the bros. Got their nightly treats. Oh, Willie. 3D House of Willie. Who can remember that? Willie. The 3D house of Willie. If anybody could name that, I'll be very impressed. If anybody knows where that comes from. All right. Well. There were the, uh, oh shit, Peanut. Peanut's up in here. Just in time, Peanut. William Boris are asking about you, Peanut. I can't give Willie anymore. He's on a diet. 
He's doing great with his diet. I must say I'm very proud of him. All right. Let's start off with some questions before we get this motherfucker kicked off. Because it's going to be pretty awesome. Josh5180 has a great question. Are there demos of the other pagan songs not on the demo CD? And no, there are not, Josh. Pretty much everything that is out there, except for the missing Killer Rat Poison rehearsal tape, is pretty much out there. You can find it. Everything has pretty much been released. So... Sorry, Josh. There's no missing things. Everything you, everything that's out there, that's all we put out, basically. Uh, what else? Bayou Lou has a very quick question. He says, what does this shirt say? Let's see if we can change this up so I can put this into normal perspective. And it says, make Transylvania great again. As you can see, it's Vlad the Impaler. Uh, hate culture. Hate culture t-shirts. Makes all kind of messed up shit like this. But yes. Hate culture. They, they're great. They make some very cool stuff. Uh, Alright, let's get another question. Mosole asks... How were the birthday festivities, bruh? And the birthday festivities were fantastic. Thank you for asking. Speaking of which, a mystery person. Let's go back to normal perspective here for a second. A, uh, a, a mystery person sent this to me for my birthday. As you can see, it's Pogo the Clown. It's a patch. It says, more bodies found in the Gacy home. So I got this, someone sent this to me for my birthday, but there was no return address. They sent it from Amazon. So if you're watching and you sent this to me, thank you very much. This patch is fucking amazing. And I appreciate that. It's great. Uh, let's see what other kind of questions we got. Johnny Mac LSU has a great question. Marry, kill, fuck, marry, kill. Michael Klein, Rutan, Tom G. Warrior. Okay, that's easy. Okay, I would kill Michael Klein. I would, uh... I would fuck Eric Rutan. And I would marry Tom G. Warrior. There you go. So, Spinny Nuke says, Will there be another run of signature guitars in the future? And the answer is probably. Being that the success of the LTD run through Chandra Guitars, which I have a very big announcement to make shortly regarding that, uh, was such a success that uh, we're, we're trying to figure out what's going to happen next as far as the LTD Signature Series of my guitar uh so we're just gonna have to wait and find out but the answer is maybe all right let's see johnny michaelis you has another question it says how much paypal tip to get the good rotten record stories uh I'm not getting into that. Let's just put it that way. Good Rotten Record stories. The thing is, there are no good Rotten Record stories. I mean, there's some okay Rotten Record stories. But I'm not going to be one of those people to start a bunch of shit. You know? It's not, it's not what I do. So let's see. Let's see. Goddamn, Johnny Mac LSU, you're very inquiring. You sent like seven questions. All right.
let's go to the bottom and start there. So let's see. Mitch Reif has a great question. He says, how often do the cats get nip? And not often, probably about twice a month if they're, if they're very well behaved. So thank you for the question. Uh, to get a couple more in, I'll get back to the questions after we have to uh, bullshit a little more. Arachnid cabinets is a great question. My boy, what are shows looking like for goat whore? Boris, what are you doing up there? Get down. Anyway, Arachnus Cabinets, my boy, Rob, says, what are shows looking like for Goat Whore? And I must say, shows are looking pretty good for Goat Whore. Let's just put it this way. Um, in August, if you want to see Goat Whore live in August, you might want to be in the Texas area. Just going to throw it out there. And if everything works out really good, like we're hoping it will, there will be more than one show. And the lineup for these shows will be fantastic. Some good, heavy fucking shit. Let's just put it that way. So I can't, I'm not allowed to talk about that just yet. All right, all right, all right. One more question. Let's let's uh, let's find a good one, and we'll uh, well, I'll start my bullshit session. Let's see. Let's see, man. Y'all got a bunch of freaking good questions tonight. I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna pick one more. And I'm gonna move on. Sorry, I'm fucking breeding through all this shit. All right, Billy Ridge in seventy three says. Is that a rich bitch leaning against my your cases? All right. He's talking about that thing. And let's bust it out. Bust it out a couple of times on here. Hey, Will. What's up, bro? Boris. The dude's a wreck in the place. What the hell's going on? Yes. This is a U.S. series. I believe it's 19... 83 or 84 BC rich bitch neck through body all the good stuff this is basically everybody's been posting a bunch of pictures of Jeff Hanneman because you know I think it was his birthday or maybe it was the day of his death I forget recently maybe both very close to I think they were close to each other. But anyway, this is not the guitar that Jeff Hammond played. But this is basically the same exact model that Jeff Hanneman played for a long time. I believe it was like on the Hello H tours and on Rain and Blood. He actually used a guitar like this. So as you can see, I have the Slayer sticker on it in honor of old Jeff. And we have the Jeff Hanneman pick. I don't know if you could see it on there. But I have the Jeff Hanneman pick on the back of the headstock. Yeah, this is this is a real this this ain't no NJ series. I'll tell you that. This thing is This is a this is a badass. This I'm I'm very, very lucky I came across this guitar. Let's just put it this way. Because I've been looking for one and one popped up for the right price and I couldn't say no I had to get it so yes this is essentially 
the same kind of BC Rich bitch that Jeff Hanneman used to play. This is not the one that he used to play, but this is the same model, same year, same everything, same color, same bridge, not the same pickups, but uh, yes, this thing is this thing is a great guitar. Yeah, good guitar. Yes, this is this is a BC Rich bitch. Very nice one, I must say. The neck on that thing is fantastic. The neck on that thing is pretty fucking close to perfect. But anyway, let's take one more question. And we'll... Mo Soleil has a good question. We're going to end it on this. It says, Mo Soleil says, What is the last album I bought and just how impressed were you? Last album I bought was Noctum, The Black Consecration. I bought it a couple of months ago. And uh, they're from Europe somewhere, I forget. But anyway, knocked them the Black's Consecration, and I was extremely impressed with that record. That is a fantastic front-to-back black metal record. That record is fucking great. Um, that one's really good. Something else that I heard recently that was amazing. Oh, man, let's see. What was it? Let me pull up my listening history. And we will find out. We will find out, I think, possibly. Let's see here. Let's just find out. What? Fuck, I'm bad with band names. See, this is what happens when you get old. Forget shit all the time. Uh, oh, God damn it, where is it? Where are you, you son of a bitch? You beautiful motherfucking album. God damn it. It looked almost like the Abysmal Lord cover. That's what made me listen to it. And then I was like, holy shit, this is fucking sick. Oh, uh, god damn it. Uh, I'll forget. But anyway. Uh, anyway. So. Now that I have your attention, I'd like to make a big announcement. Big, huge announcement. So, those of you who ordered the LTD uh, signature series of mine, they're here. Well, they're not here, but they're going to be at Chandro Guitars this week. And I am going to be at Chandro Guitars on Saturday, not on Saturday, um, signing the guitars, if you want your sign, if you want to come buy Chandro guitars and pick it up in person, I'll be there, I could hand you the guitar if you'd like, I could sign whatever you want on the guitar, I mean, if you just want to come to Chandro guitars and hang out and bring stuff to get signed or just to hang out and bullshit, that's fine too, but I will be at Chandro Guitars. Let's see, where is Chandro Guitars anyway? It's in Wisconsin somewhere. I think it's right outside of Milwaukee. All right, let's see. Chandro Guitars, here we go. Where are we? There we go. The address is, ready? 910 East Moreland Boulevard, Waukesha, Waukesha, Wisconsin. Waukesha, Wisconsin. So, Chandra Guitars, that's the address. I will be there Saturday, pretty much all day, hanging out with a bunch of sick fucking guitars. So, if you guys, if any of you guys purchased the guitar, and are in the area and would like to come by and pick up the guitar on Saturday, I'll be there. Just say it. So yes, 
I'll be out there. I leave here on Thursday morning. And I come back Sunday evening, so we'll have to figure out possibly an earlier Sammy Sunday out there or something. But I'm definitely going to do a live stream when I get out there, for sure. Um, but yes. So I hope to see a couple of you guys out there. That would be awesome. Um, you know. Just going to be hanging. Hanging, playing some guitar. Bullshit. It's going to be good. So anyway. We had some requests for some songs this week as well. I'm very excited about this. It's good shit. So, let's start off. With a tune. What's up, Boris? What's up, man? Matter of fact, I'm gonna play it on my trusty LTD Sammy Dewey signature model. This thing is a this thing is fucking amazing. Anybody that bought one of these, they're, they're fucking, they came out fucking great. So anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to play... You guys hear that? Everything sound good? Josh, does this sound good? No? All right. Fuck it. here is we're going to tilt this to about right yay does that sound good to you guys yes alright so let's see Josh Cord and Ronald Ivan Jack had some requests for some tunes. We're going to fucking play through them real quick. All right. So, Ronald Ivan Jack, you requested a song off of the very first Goat Whore record, Eclipse of Ages Into Black. One of my favorite songs on that record. So, we're going to go ahead and jam through this fucking shit. And this song is called... Invert the Virgin. So let's get everything.
anybody enjoy that? Yep, I certainly did. So, Ronald Ivan Jack, that was for you, bruh. Thank you for the tip and the request. I appreciate that. Um, all right, so now, Josh Cobb requested a very, what's up, Will? Josh Cobb requested a kind of a, a burner on the right hand song. So we're just gonna fucking do it. Fuck it. So, this is one of my favorite songs off of uh, Vengeful Ascension. So, and this is the last song. This is the last song on Vengeful Ascension. It's a very, very, very fast song. So I'm gonna try to get good and in the shots so we can see how much I can mess up on this song.
Josh Cobb. That was for you, buddy. Thank you for the tip and the request. That was fun. That's one of my favorite songs to play off of that record. It's just fucking mayhem the whole way through. You guys see Willie running through here? It's going fucking crazy, man. All right. Josh. Josh looks 18, but he's actually 60. Oh, fuck. So, that song will uh, make your right hand a little, a little tingly, if you know what I mean. All right, what else? What else? Let's uh, let's see. Let's take some more questions. All right, Josh. God damn it. God damn it, Josh. Last one. Thoughts on Drake as a Dax replacement for Acid Bad? Probably not, Josh. That's all I'm going to say on that. Can you quit asking that question? Josh has been asking this question for like the last three months. So finally. Josh, you have your answer. Drake Bell is... I'm not going to be playing music with Jake Bell. Just letting you know that. Not happening. All right. Since the Metal Guitars, that's a great question. It says, favorite pickup that's not a Seymour Duncan? And I would say it would have to be the Lawler DB. I keep talking about this pickup. And there's a reason why I keep talking about this pickup. Because it's freaking awesome. That one's really good. Uh, another one of my favorites that I use from time to time is a DiMarzio Super Distortion. And I also like the DiMarzio ah, Tone Zone. DiMarzio Tone Zone. I like that one as well. Uh, what else? The Bare Knuckle Pickups. The War Pig is pretty good. And the Nail Bomb was all right. So those are some of the pickups that I like. All right. Joel Likes Pointing Guitar says, When's the live shows, bruh? And I could say, Soon. Very, very soon. There'll be, there'll be a couple before the end of the year. There'll be more than a couple before the end of the year. Let's put it that way. I don't know if it's going to be a full-blown tour, but they're going to be here and there. Let's just put it that way. All right. More in the Southern Skies said, how long did the beef jerky last? So More in the Southern Skies is a very good old friend of mine that I've been knowing for a very long time. And he was gracious enough to bring me some very delicious beef jerky at the uh, crowbar shows that we played a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and to answer that question is the beef jerky lasted about a week. That shit was delicious. Anyway, let's zip through a couple more. All right. Fractal Illusion has a great question. It says, stories of calling out dudes that are dicks because of their band, but they're not original members? I don't, I don't have any stories like that, really. Um, no, sorry. I don't have any stories, shit like that. I mean, I'm sure I've... I'm just going to stop right there. So Boss MT2 has a great question. It says, did you ever get to that Ibanez Iceman? I'm dying to see it. No, I haven't. I have so many projects that I'm working on, Boss MT2, right now, as far as guitars go, that I kind of have my hands full. That one's on the bottom of the list, but it is going to get done soon. So, it's just, it, I just got to find time to put into it to make it right. 
But it the boss I that the boss the Ivan as Iceman is coming very soon. It's just I need a I need to do a fret level to it and you know just some small things here and there I need to be fixed on it. But one day I'm going to get to it and it's going to be awesome. So just hang on, just be patient with me, please. All right, Arachnid Cabinets has a question. Says, did BC Rich ever offer making you guitars as an artist before you began your relationship with ESP? And no, they did not. No. Um, although I do like the BC Rich stuff, you know, especially the American-made custom shop shit is really good. Um, but they have never offered me a... Uh, any sort of endorsement or anything like that or artist discount or anything but I did work with Neil Moser for a while and that's about as close as I got to BC Rich so you know but BC Rich never really offered me anything you know from what I understand you know what I understand the back then BC Rich if you were a lower tier artist they didn't treat you very well. That's from what I understand. That's what I've heard from a very reliable source. If you're a bigger, you know, a higher tier artist, like say like Kerry King or the guy from Five Finger Death Punch or whatever, you know, they'll do treat you right. But everybody else lower on the totem pole kind of gets treated like, well, used to get treated like not how an artist should be treated. Let's just put it that way. But that is a great question. Sinister Metal Guitar says production Sammy Star. It's right here, man. If you didn't get your hands on one of the 30, you're gonna... I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm not gonna say you're not gonna get one, but I'm just saying that I don't know what's gonna happen. So we'll... We will have to find, we will have to wait and see. Devil's Twerk has a very interesting question. What is a cover song you prefer over the original band doing it? Whoa, that's a good question, Cole Myers. Man, let's, uh, you have to think about that one for a little while, man. Um, shit. Got one. Mexican Radio by Celtic Frost. They covered Wall of Voodoo's Mexican Radio onto Into Pandemonium. And I definitely like that version better than the original version. So, there's one. All right, sent us the metal guitars and sent a retort and said, sorry, I meant, are we going to see more? And you're, we're going to have to wait. I can't answer that right now. Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out, we'll find out very soon. Joel... Likes pointy guitars and says, how well did Moser treat me? And you're talking about Moser guitars. And I must say that for the operation that Moser, Neil Moser had, that he was at the time, because he wasn't a big company. It was, he was basically doing the shit out of his garage. And then he would, he would make handmade guitars. And then, uh, he would get some import stuff in, but in small quantities, you know. But I have to say that Neil Moser definitely treated me fantastic. Because anytime I really wanted anything from him, it was just like he would order it. And, and then a couple of months later, a guitar would show up. But uh, I was trying to understand that being that he was a very independent guitar maker, that... You know, being that he is a legend, um, 
he was going to make me a handmade one at one point in time. It wasn't going to be for free, but it was going to be for a discount. Even with the discount, it was going to be expensive. Let's just put it that way. You're talking almost talking almost three thousand dollars for a guitar. But it was from Neil Mosey. It was right before he retired. Then shit happened where he basically slow. He retired for a little while from making a guitar. Right before I got to the point where I could afford to buy the guitar from him. So that didn't happen. But as far as him and Aileen, his wife, for running Moe's Guitars, they treated us fantastic. You know, absolutely great. We would go by the Moza shop and hang out and just, it was great. Yeah. So Neil Moza is a class act, no doubt. Sam X Mob has a question and says, what is your favorite place to play a show? My favorite place to play a show at this point is anywhere. But some of my favorite places to play when before the shit hit the fan was uh, Reggie's at Chica in Chicago. That was always a fantastic time. It's a great venue. The shows there are always fantastic. Um, where else? Let's think. Um, oh man, the Roxy in LA is always a good time. That's always a good show and the venue is very cool and everybody that works at the venue is awesome. So that's a cool place to play. It's one of my favorite places. Oh man, let's think of some other places, man. Oh geez, there's so many cool places to play. Those are just two off the top of my head. Um. Uh, Sorry. It was, sorry, Samantha. That's all I could think of for right now. All right. Mosule says, What size strings are you rolling with on the latest signature ESP model? Like on this one in particular? This one in particular, I have it strung up with 60 to 12. Um... Diadario or is it Dunlop? Dunlop 60 to 12 gauge. It's the standard gauge you could buy. They make uh, 60 to 12s. Performance Plus, I believe they're called. Yeah, but what if you're talking about what the guitars are shipping with? I'm not entirely sure. I'm assuming they're shipping just tuned to E with standard gauge strings, but I mean, I'm sure if you contact. Chandro guitars and would like a different set of strings on them set up to your preference. I'm sure that won't be a problem But yeah, good question Mo Fake acid bath police have a great has a great question it says is there truth about Manson calling you about playing guitar in his band? I'm not going to talk about that. Next question. Sam Mob has another question. Said, what's the first guitar I ever owned? First guitar I ever owned was an Electra. It was like a hollow body, the big Gibson looking thing, the Bigsby Tremolo. It was a freaking, uh, it was an Electra. It was bigger than me at the time because I was a kid. And uh, my uncle had it. My uncle had it. My uncle had it, and I got it from him. And uh, that was the first guitar I ever got. And I wish I still had it, because now that I think back of it, that guitar was pretty awesome. It smelled, I remember it smelled really good. So, yes, it was an Electra. I forgot what model it was. It was like one of those big uh, ES. 335s or whatever those big jazz looking guitars it's one of those things Joel likes pointing guitar that's a great question it's, can we bring cats to Randall's shop Saturday and yes it is a pet friendly environment as long as I'm there 
So yes, feel free to bring your cats. That would be fucking great. So yes. Just as long as it doesn't shit or piss in a guitar case, we're good. All right. The Devil's Twerk has a great question. It said, would you like to do... What would you like to do for a Godor video in the future? What would I like to do for a Godor video? Man, you don't want to know what I'd like to do for a Godor video. Uh, you know, I would like to push things to the extreme to where it would get banned everywhere that it got played. Essentially. Like, this would just be really, really taken very, very, very far. You know. It would probably get us in a lot of trouble. But, that, you know, you know, just a regular. Lots of blood, lots of devil worship, you know, stuff like that. All right. Let's see. Kimmy Sapa has a great question. Says, how's the mastering on the new re album coming along? Well, Kimmy, the mastering is not being done right now. We are going to Orlando, Florida uh, in a couple of weeks to finish some tidbits here and there on the recording of the record. So we're going to finish some stuff up as far as the recording goes. I'm going to send that off and start getting the mixes ready to go. And probably the mastering after that will take the process. It will take, take place because, you know, it's the last thing to do. But it's coming along nice. As soon as we finish these little things up that we need to record, it'll be quick. Because I heard some of the latest mixes and they are sounding really good. So as soon as we get up our lazy asses and finish performing on the record, then we'll be in business. Okay, the Shan 420 is an interesting question. Say, so what's the weirdest guitar I own? The weirdest guitar I own. I don't really own anything weird per se. Everything is pretty, pretty normal, I would say. This is something weird. I got something weird. It's very weird. This would probably be, it's not necessarily weird, but it's, it's weird for me. It's a Taylor, uh, CE 512, I believe. Uh, oh, this was a birthday gift for me from Dead Beauty 13. And I appreciate that very much because this thing is... This thing is a fucking awesome guitar. It's This thing is a fucking fantastic guitar. It's like... This guitar is just fantastic. But as far as like unusual for me, that would probably be it. But uh, yeah. But it, it, that's just un, that's just an unusual guitar for me to own. I like a lot of pointy stuff. All right, let's see. Let's go to the bottom and work our way up. God damn, you guys are fucking crazy tonight, man. All right, what's that? Mitch Reif says, on the anniversary of his passing, do you have any memories of Jeff Hanneman? 
And unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of memories of Jeff Hanneman. I've met him for a brief second once. And uh, it was just like, hey, hey. <laughs> they introduced each other. And that was the extent of our uh, meeting. So, even though he is one of my favorite guitar players, you know, um, he, you know, I, I didn't really get to know him. I just got to say hi and shake his hand, and that was about the extent of me knowing him. True Necro Cinnabite has a question. says, what band has been the craziest to tour with? And I would definitely say, hands down, the craziest band I've ever toured with in my life was Watane. Like, those dudes are fucking insane. And uh, let's just put it this way. They definitely walk it like they talk it. They are not fucking around. Everything that those dudes represent, they are 100% into. There is no faking at all. So, yeah, let's just say on that tour, I've definitely seen some things that I never thought I would see. And I've definitely seen some things that made me think. Let's just put it that way. So anyway, let's take a couple more questions and see what we're going through here. God damn. So Jimmy164 has a question. Jimmy K164 said, will I sign the cats? And no, I will not sign the cats. Unfortunately, I don't sign cats. I will pet the cats, and I will hold the cats, but I will not sign the cats. All right, let's see. Showboy 138 has another question. Says, did I ever use lace pickups? Put a dirty hash in my hagstrom, bro. All right, yes, I have tried the lace. I've tried the Dirty Heshers before. They're pretty good. I've also tried the Dragonauts, which I liked a lot. The Matt Pike Lace Dragonaut pickups. Those those are really good as well. Those are the only two that I've really tried. I've never really tried any of their other pickups. But I've heard good things. I've heard very, very good things. Let's see what else. Johnny Mac LSU, goddamn, bro. Johnny Mac LSU, you have like fucking 20 questions, bro. Alright, Slaughter1994 says, any more signature stuff coming out soon? And Slaughter1994, yes. There's some very cool shit coming up. Very soon, uh, some of it revolves around pedals, some of it revolves around guitars, some of it revolves around acid bath, some of it revolves around goat whore. So I got some cool shit in the works that we're trying to plan out right now, figure out how to do some of this shit. But yes. There's cool shit coming out very soon as far as signature stuff. All right, Sam Mob, you got one. This is it. This is the last question for the night. My most sentimental tattoo that I have, and hands down, would have to be Orville Dunworth. This is Orville Dunworth from Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. Uh, this tattoo was a gift to me from Jordan Barlow. 
for my birthday. So this tattoo really means a lot to me being that, you know, he was just like, come in for your birthday and I'll take care of you. I got, I got something special because I didn't know. It, we were planning a cover-up because oh, I had a bunch of garbage right there. And uh, it was all faded out anyway and all that. So he was like, I got a plan to cover up your arm. This would be a birthday present from me to you. And when he busted out the fucking Orville and it fit and everything, I was like, that's genius. It's great. So this one, Orville, it needs to be touched up a little bit, but, but Orville Dunsworth in the coffin, children shouldn't play with dead things. This is my most sentimental tattoo because it was a birthday gift from one of my best friends on this earth. All right, what we got? We got a few minutes left, so let's see. Mr. William H. Cat. That's a great question. It's the biggest shithole place I've played. Well, the biggest shithole place that I've ever played and when I use the word shithole, I literally mean it was a shithole. And I'll explain why it was a shithole. It was this place in New York City called the Voodoo Lounge. Okay? You went down into this basement. The club was in the basement. The place was terrible. Okay, so the reason why I would call this place a shithole is because none of the plumbing in this building worked. So, when people would take a shit in the bathroom, it wouldn't flush. And they wouldn't clean it. So, it was just festering shit in these toilets. And piss. And just, it was disgusting. So, that, my friend, Mr. William H. Cat, the Voodoo Lounge in New York City, was the biggest shithole I've ever played. And still to this day cannot be topped. Not only did it have stairs, because I hate loading equipment down the up and down stairs. I fucking hate it. So, not only were there stairs, the people were assholes, and there was shit in the toilets all the fucking time. Like you walked in there, it smelled like a fucking sewer, sewer tank. So one more question, and then I'm getting the fuck out of here. Let's see. Oh man, we got all kind of stuff. Psycho Bill 55 says, it's my birthday tomorrow. And Psycho Bill 55, happy birthday. Just thought I'd throw that out there. All right. Here we go. One more good questions. Let's see. All right, we're going to end this Mark Graves, Mark Graves music. We're going to end this quite this this evening with a Mark Graves question, and it is: Did Goat Whore do any covers other than Into Crips of Rays? And yes, we have done a couple more. We've done "Don't Need Religion" by Motorhead. That was for a decibel flexi disc. And we also did Under a Funeral Moon by Dark Throne. And that was a bonus track 
for the Japanese edition of Carving Out the Eyes of God. Now, I think both of them are pretty much around. You can find them if you search for them. I think uh, maybe the Dark Throne one is on YouTube, and I know the Don't Need Religion one is on SoundCloud. So there they are. All right, y'all. So, don't forget, next Saturday night, evening, I, I think I'm going to be at the store from 1 till it closes, 1 in the afternoon until like 6 p.m., 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. I'm going to be at Chandro Guitars, hanging out with my new ESP signature, LTD ESP signature series. They're going to be there. I'm going to be there checking them out. I hope you're going to be there checking them out with me. Uh, like I said, 910 East Moreland Boulevard, Wakisha, Wakisha, W-A-U-K-E-S-H-A, Wakisha, Wakisha, Wisconsin. There it is. Chandro Guitars. Hope to see some of y'all there. Like I said, I'll be there on Saturday from 1 till closing, which I'm assuming 1, 1, 1 p.m. till closing, which I'm assuming is around 6. Um, what else? I will be there with bells on. So you guys have a great week. And I will do a live stream possibly on Saturday because I'm getting up to Milwaukee, Wisconsin area uh, on Thursday, so Friday, I believe I'm going into the Chandro Guitar Store after they close to just go over the guitars and make sure everything is good. So I'll probably live stream Friday night from Chandro Guitars, um, and hope to see you guys Saturday. At least some of you guys, if you guys can make it out there. Um, if not. I'll see you guys on Sunday. I'll post on what time we're going to be, what time we're going to do the live stream on Sunday. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it early or not, being that my flight leaves from Wisconsin around 5 p.m. So I'm not sure what time we'll be getting home. So we'll we'll see what happens. But anyway, I'll keep you guys updated on what's going to happen for next Sammy Sunday. But. You guys have a great week. I hope you guys had a great weekend. And uh, I will see all of y'all soon.